It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, uh, and this is 5.45 Live. Joe, what do we get on deck tonight? Well, all right, Roland. Tonight, Procter & Gamble buys new chapter. More burglars and bank robbers revealed. Why Vermont Yankee might not outlast March 21st, and much more. Stay tuned. And remember, we do that all in 15 minutes, so make sure you stick with us right here on 5.45 Live. <laughs> We'd like to give you a definitive number of crimes, but it's not possible at this time. We can say with confidence that over 100 burglaries are involved in the larger joint investigation. Welcome back to this March 16, 2012 edition of 545 Live. We're here on a Friday evening. We'll try and jam pack the next 15 minutes. Some big news coming down the pike uh, today and this week. That's footage of Vermont State Police Lieutenant Rick Hopkins at a press conference held February 6th when officials uh, from several agencies held a press conference to reveal the first uh, seven suspects apprehended in the case that now... Uh, uh, has spanned five uh, states, and this huge burglary ring uh, victimized several establishments, hundreds, they even say. Now, more than a month after the first arrest, <clears throat> police continue to tack on offenders in the now notorious burglary ring that stretched across Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Travis J. Noyes, Lance E. Thomas, and Christopher A. Goldschmidt have all pleaded not guilty in their involvement in the case. A total of 12 suspects have been identified as being involved with the burglary ring, and authorities say that more may be added to the list. The three named suspects have been released on conditions that they do not contact each other and that they do not enter the locations that they are being suspected of burglarizing. Taking a look at uh, some footage, uh, Zach Stevens from the Reformer shooting that of those suspects at their arraignments. Again, uh, they are out. All right, is it me for moving on? Looks that way. Moving on with more robbers and uh, villains seems to be the talk of the town here. Uh, Wednesday in Peril, Massachusetts, police arrested 38-year-old Keene resident Chad Dustin, the remaining suspect in the February 28th robbery at the People's United Bank in Bellows Falls. Uh, in a scene that involved SWAT teams surrounding the apartment complex he was uh, believed to be residing in, according to the Vermont State Police. Detectives suspected that Dustin may be uncooperative and armed. Uh, David Scott of the Pepperell uh, Police, he's the police chief down there, said it ended up uh, ending quickly at the sight of the police squads outside. Dustin peacefully exited the building and was taken into custody. Mm. Last week, police arrested Dustin's alleged accomplice, 30-year-old Swansea resident Gerald Clough. Both men are being charged with grand larceny from a banking institution. Clough has pleaded innocent. Dustin will be arraigned in Vermont following his extradition from Massachusetts. Next, the $80 billion a year consumer goods giant Procter & Gamble is moving in after a deal was struck late Thursday night to purchase New Chapter, the 30-year local vitamin and supplement producer. No official numbers have been released, but New Chapter board chairwoman Liz Bankowski told the reformer today that the company has no plans to change operations in Brattleboro though they will look to hire a CEO. In an interview last summer with the Yale School of Management's Open Media Project, Procter & Gamble Chairman Bob McDonald talked about Procter & Gamble's continuing expansion goals. Uh, when you talk about uh, touching and improving more lives, more parts of the world more completely, the more lives is about getting to as many consumers as we possibly can with as many products as we possibly can. Uh, right now, the average consumer in the world, the average man, woman, and child in the world, spends $12 a year on Procter & Gamble products. We'd like that to be $14 a year in five years. That's uh, Procter & Gamble CEO, uh, Chairman uh, Bob McDonald, talking about in an interview last year with the Yelp and Media Project uh, about the company's plans for expansion across the globe. Um, now, I, I would say, Joe, that maybe half the story here is just how this unfolded on Facebook uh, with the Brattleboro Reformer uh, kind of really teasing people here a little bit with what was going on. Uh, in fact, I got uh, a secret and I'm not telling until four <laughs> o'clock. So that's right. Uh, so, of course, uh, posted uh, the latest consumer goods company in the world is coming to Brattleboro to try some new medicine. A great line here. But uh, earlier in the day. Um, we did have a, uh, a quote here from them that kind of, I really feel like, did a kind of official, almost Hollywood-esque trailer here. Breaking news, stay tuned here for a major announcement about a local Brattleboro business. This could be one of the biggest stories of the past year. Speculations on Facebook ranged from uh, a private four-hour meeting at New Chapter to some saying that uh, the Brattleboro Food Co-op could be closing. Uh, the reformer told viewers uh, that uh, they should stand by, so it had everybody on the edge. 
of their seats. All right, I'll, I'll throw this one back your way, Joe. All right, moving on. Entergy's lawsuit against the state of Vermont may have voided the legislature's attempts to close Vermont Yankee, but the plant could still be forced to discontinue operations when its original license expires on March 21st. Intergy has now turned its sights on the Public Service Board, who have yet to issue the Certificate of Public Good critical to Vermont Yankee's continued operation. According to the Department of Public Service and the Attorney General, the plant can continue to run past the expiration of the original license issued in 1972, should the board fail to reach a conclusion by March 21st. But at Friday's PSB hearing in Montpelier, members of the board said they don't necessarily agree. You have the ability to ask us to do what you think we need to do. It doesn't mean we have to do it, but you have the ability to ask us, so feel free. In addition, uh, it now appears that the Public Service Board could issue Vermont Yankee a certificate of public good for the continued operation, but deny the plant an additional certificate uh, to store spent fuel past March 21st, without uh, which continued operation at Vermont Yankee would not be viable. This has prompted uh, Entergy to petition the court to reopen the case in their suit against the state, with company spokesman Michael Burns saying, We made a number of filings asking the court to provide clarity for all parties regarding certain aspects of Judge Murtha's decision. In addition to the fast approaching deadline for Vermont Yankee, uh, the one-year anniversary of the nuclear disaster at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have painted a stark backdrop uh, for the ongoing debate over the future of Vermont's lone nuclear plant, prompting Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders to again ask Washington to assess the uh, current role played by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The NRC has granted 71 license renewals and has never rejected one. 71 to zero. In every single instance, the NRC has said it is appropriate to relicense a nuclear power plant. That clip uploaded yesterday to Bernie's own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Senator Sanders. All right, uh, Joe, uh, I'm going to have you read this one. I feel like I've been reading for way too long here. Hey, all right then, Roland. And to keep the VY stories coming, last night the Vernon Select Board, along with the school board, principal, police department, highway department, fire department, emergency management, and emergency services met with local residents to, according to the press release, quote, outline what steps are being taken to keep the disruption to their daily lives as minimal as possible. The uh, disruption referred to, of course, the large-scale protest planned for the coming uh, this coming Thursday, and we'll uh, try and have plenty of 545 live coverage scheduled for that. Uh, that's, of course, the date Vermont Yankees' original operating license expires, or it could be the first day that they'll be operating uh, beyond that date should it come to that. But uh, we're going to get as much coverage as we can of that. Talking about protests here, I just mentioned that in a two-page ad taken out in uh, area papers by Entergy last week, the Louisiana-based corporation's chairman and CEO, J. Wayne Leonard, uh, said, quote, We greatly appreciate the backing of our supporters and respect the rights of our opponents to peacefully protest. So we'll see how uh, that all plays out. Next, if you're looking to win some money for your small business, then listen up. Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation and Strolling of the Heifers have teamed up to present the 2012 Business Plan Competition for new and old small businesses in the Wyndham region, and prizes totaling up to $60,000. And while starting a business may seem a sizable undertaking, Competition Coordinator Dave Allstadt says there'll be plenty of help along the way. You'll get access to additional guidance from SBDC and SEVCA who will help you work through what it means to submit a business prospectus. To learn more about the categories and corresponding prizes, which spike as high as $10,000, along with all the dates for workshops and applications, plus anything else you might want to know about how to get your small business idea or establish small business in on the action, just visit brattleboroughdevelopment.com or call BDCC at 802-257-7731. They are very helpful down there. They'll do anything they can to help you get involved with that, and they really want to see you succeed, that's for sure. Absolutely. In addition, you can watch that full interview with Dave, complete with all the juicy details, on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Uh, keywords there, 545 Live. All right, a few things to wrap up our traffic report. Joe, we'll try and do this very quickly. Uh, as we uh, have precious little time left, we'll just take a look at, Ooh, at downtown. Lovely. I want to make sure that people uh, get a get a chance to take a look at what's going on in downtown for Friday afternoon. Uh, just 
beware of uh, of downtown here is is really the uh, the key to that. Uh, then we've got Putney Road, High Street, and uh, Canal Street on the orange, which means heavily congested but still moving. And 91 traffic goers are good to go. No hidden surprises there. And uh, that'll just about uh, do it here for today. I just want to quick take a even quicker look at weather as we look at temperatures in the 70s, 60s, and 70s uh, going all through next week with sun or uh, at least uh, partly sunny. It promises uh, and- to be good. Let's see if it pans out that way we're uh, not going to see any rain until uh, a week from tomorrow when we get showers saturday and sunday uh, and for the rest of the time there uh, we're going to be in the 70s all right just a couple quick things uh, before we wrap up here the wind is blowing on my street is the women's film festival film showing at 8 45 tonight at nyt and for bc tv viewers catch uh, maria dominguez's program countdown to closure at 8 p.m on channel 8 that leaves us 30 seconds to thank all the people that make uh 545 Live tick, including operations manager Blasta Papelka, um, BCTV access coordinator Frederick Noyes, our brand new intern Nolan Edgar, who's been slaving away over this script, myself, Roland Boyden, alongside Joe Bushy. The show is, uh, as we mentioned, 545 Live. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll be back Monday at 545 p.m. Night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>